Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Perkins, and we are live at the Speaking Empire Experience. And, you know, I am so excited because look who I get to be with, the woman who won the Empowered Leader Award. And, you know, you really are one of those women, people in general, who empower others. And you do it through what, such a unique concept. Because as you say, most of us live to die, but you teach them how to die to live. Now, that sounds a little odd, so I need you to help me out and explain it to these folks better than I can. Okay, I'd be happy to. So most of us are living to die, meaning that we're looking at the moments to be alive. And usually, or oftentimes, we take these moments to do something that makes us feel better. And many times, those things that make us feel better don't serve us in the long run. For instance, drinking alcohol or feeding our children sugar, sitting in front of the TV, hanging out. And that's okay, but we don't do this consciously. We're just doing it to feel good in the moment, but we're actually going closer to death by doing it. Versus dying to live means that you're willing and looking forward to. Just think about the, the concept of dying to live it means energy, movement, pushing through, exhilaration. And it's really about being willing to let go of the things that aren't serving you. Dying in order to live. And a really good way to look at that is that our bodies, our cells, die all the time so that we can have new cells so that we can continue really living. You know, that's really a unique concept. And I was telling you earlier, my saying used to be, I, I eat to live instead of living to eat. And this concept's the same thing. I'm dying to live. I'm excited to live. This is awesome. And I'm going to let die those things, as you say, that don't serve me. Absolutely. Well, tell me some of the things that you do to help people learn how to die to live. Okay, so it's a basic program called True Life Purpose Now. Where, actually let me back up a little bit. We have three minds. And our first mind we're very, we're very familiar with. It's our conscious mind. It's our judgment factor. You're determining what I'm saying is right or wrong right now. It's time and space. And the conscious mind takes in about five to seven points of information every second. We also have our subconscious mind, which just about everybody is aware of. And that is non-critical. It has no concept of time and space, and it takes in between two and four million bits of information every second. This is where our programming is. This is where things come up that we're not aware of, where we get attached to things, we don't know why. So most of us are familiar with that. But now we're discovering we also have the superconscious. And the superconscious is when we get into that zone, almost everybody's aware of it, especially if you do sports or just about anything in life where everything just falls into place, where the puzzle pieces of your life just merge and you're excited. There's no real concept of time. You're not worried. You know that you're in that flow, but we can't hold on to it. And for most of it, it only really happens a few times in our life. We've now found that there's three specific gifts that everybody has that's unique to you. Oh, wow. And when you're able to find out what those gifts are, then you can position yourself to be in that flow more often and to consciously be in that flow. But because we're here in physical form, we're in physical bodies, and we respond to physical universal principles, we also have the opposite of that, and that's our life lessons. And life lessons are the things that we're here to learn, to go through. Those are the things that pull into our subconscious, that we keep running into over and over and over again. They may look different, but it's the same thing. But what if, Karen, you knew what the gifts were that would propel you into that zone, and you also knew what the stumbling blocks were to getting into that zone, because that zone is where synchronicity happens. That zone is where things are created that we could never ourselves do, either through perseverance or endurance 
or through will. It's that times when you automatically run into somebody or you pick that winning ticket. And that serendipity that really is the super conscious helping us get where we need to go. Absolutely. I love that. And if I understand correctly, because we do understand our gifts and we understand our stumbling blocks, mm -hmm. we're now in a better position to make the choices that are going to take us the right place. Is that right? Exactly. In fact, what I say to people is, right now most of us are making decisions from who we're not. From our programming, from what our parents said, from what our boss tells us, from what our spouse is saying. We're making decisions from who we're not or what we think we're supposed to be doing. But what if you could make choices from who you are, really knowing who you are, having that foundation. Now you're moving into clarity. And once you have clarity, you can easily make an intention or make a choice. And then you take a small action and then things just fall into place. You know, I love that. And in serendipity, you know, we met at a couple of events, but we I met know. here this last event with Speaking Empire and serendipity. I don't know how many people have come here and said, that's what I needed and I didn't even know it. And it just showed up. And I know they go over so many great things. I love, I love going to these. If you were to tell me one aha, one takeaway you've gotten over the last three days, what would that one aha be? For me, the biggest aha I had is when I was on stage and I got this award. Um, I was one of these people that was very fortunate, or disfortunate the way you want to look at it. When I was a teenager, I saw that I was here to be on stage and to really help people. And life got in the way, and things got in the way, and my own feelings of inadequacy, again, making decisions from who I wasn't, and having that blindfold on. And I've taken the blindfold off and when I stood on stage, I now after decades was where I knew I was supposed to be having gone through all those obstacles before, knowing now that I'm not gonna have those anymore. I'm gonna be able to see what I need to circumvent. And I'm now in full service. And Anybody can do this. Anybody can be here. Oh, I love that. Well, now, we need to get in touch with you because we need to understand our super conscious mind. We need to understand our gifts, know what they are, and see our stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. So how do we get in touch with you so that you can help us with this? Um, the best way to get a hold of me is at askanika at gmail.com. And you have to spell Anika because not all of us know how to spell. <laughs> Uh, so the Gmail is A-S-K and Anika is A-N-A-K-A -A -A at gmail.com. You know what? And I don't think I told him your name when we started. I don't think you did either. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is my good friend Anika. I know who she is, so I assumed you did too. <laughs> well, now they know. Anika, you are awesome and I know the work you're doing is fabulous and is changing lives. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and I just thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome, it was such a pleasure. Thank you.